story is about German composer Johann Sebastian Bach, the father of modern music. Bach was born in 1685 and he died in 1750. That makes Bach a Baroque composer. On the 21st day of March 1685, in the town of Eisenach, Johann Sebastian Bach, one of the greatest musicians who ever lived, was born. As soon as little Sebastian was old enough, his father taught him to play the violin. The older members of the family were delighted with the music that he made on his tiny instrument. The happiest moment of the whole year came when the Bach family met for a musical festival. What a great time they all had. First of all, they sang a beautiful song together, then followed singing contests, which especially delighted young Sebastian Bach and the other children. The festival lasted for several days, and when this family reunion music festival was over, and the last carriage had rolled away, young Johann Sebastian Bach was already saying to himself, there will be another one next year. When he was only 10 years old, both his father and mother died. This was very sad for little Sebastian, but his brother, Johann Christoph, who was an organist, took him into his home at Ordra. There, he went to school at the Lyceum nearby, where he studied Latin, Greek, singing, and arithmetic. At the same time, he took lessons from his brother on a small keyboard instrument somewhat like our piano, which was called a clavier. Johann Sebastian soon learned all that his brother could teach him. He begged for more difficult music. You must not go too fast, his brother would say to him. Learn a little very well. Finally, one day, Johann Christoph brought home a large book of printed church music. Johann Sebastian could scarcely contain himself. He peeked over his brother's shoulder as Johann Christoph leafed through the many pages of wonderful music. Do let me try some, begged Johann Sebastian. It's much too difficult, exclaimed the brother. It's your bedtime. Go at once. Johann Sebastian started to obey, but just as he was mounting the stairs to his room, he noticed where his brother had put the precious music. He hurried to his room and he waited. Soon the whole household was asleep. He crept back to the top of the stairs. All was quiet. Down the stairs he tiptoed, scarcely breathing as he stepped. Fortunately, Johann Christoph and his family slept soundly. The night was bright with moonlight. There, through a lattice door of the cupboard, Sebastian could see the wonderful book. Cautiously, he stuck one foot, one finger through the opening. By bending the book up tightly, he managed to slip it out through the bars. His heart nearly stopped beating. He clutched the book tightly to him and started back up the stairway. Although he was careful, each seemed to ring out in the clear, cold air. At last he reached his own room. He could read the wonderful notes of music by the moonlight. This was surely fortunate because little Johann Sebastian Bach had neither lamp nor candle of his own. He sat down as close to the window as possible and began to copy the music into the notebook. Without stopping, although his hands were numb from the cold, he worked on until he could no longer tell one note from the other. Back, he tiptoed with the book. Cautiously, he slid it back into the cupboard. 
Once more, he fumbled his way back up to his room. There he fell asleep with the copybook under his pillow. For the next six months, whenever the moon was bright enough, Johann Sebastian worked away like a beaver. Many days, Johann Christoph scolded young Sebastian for being sleepy, but he merely nodded and kept his secret. Finally, the whole book was copied. Johann Sebastian could scarcely wait to play the music. At last, the moment came when Johann Christoph left the house to play at a church service. Johann Sebastian ran down to the clavier with his copy book. What joy to be able to play and hear the music that he had copied. He played on and on as long as he dared. The next day he played until he heard his brother's footsteps. On the third day when Johann Christoph was again called away to the church, Johann Sebastian lost himself completely in his playing. He didn't hear his brother's approaching footsteps. The door opened and there stood Johann Christoph. What does this mean? Where did you get that music? He strode across the room and snatched up the notebook. So you stole the music? It will do you no good. Give it back to me, begged Sebastian. Not until you're ready for it. And with that, Sebastian's older brother strode out of the room with the copy book under his arm. Not long after this, Sebastian worked, walked 200 miles to Lundberg, where he was admitted to St. Michael's School. He sang in the choir to pay for his board and schooling. After he was too old to sing in the boys' choir, he played the violin. Then the great moment came when he was permitted to study the organ. Organ music seemed the most wonderful thing in the world to young Sebastian Bach. Many times he traveled hundreds of miles on foot with his violin tucked under his arm to hear the great organist Reinken play at Hamburg. When he was 18 years old, the Duke of Weimar invited him to play the violin at his court. Then while he was visiting relatives, he was made organist at a new church at Arnstadt. Soon after he took that position, he received permission to travel to Lubeck to hear a great organist whose name was Buxtehude. Johann Sebastian Bach was supposed to have stayed four weeks but he stayed three months learning everything he possibly could from that great music master, Buxtehuda. All this time, he was composing his own music. When an opportunity came to move to Mühlhausen, not far from Arnstadt, he went because the people of that parish promised him more time in which he could compose. With him, he took his young wife, Maria Barbara Bach. From there, he returned to Weimar as court organist and chamber musician. Johann Sebastian Bach's fame as an organist and composer traveled all over Germany. One day, he was called to the court of King Ferdinand Augustus to compete in a harpsichord contest with a famous French musician by the name of Marchand. When the day came for the contest, all the great ladies and gentlemen of the court were waiting for the concert to begin. A court attendant announced that Marchand had fled in fright. Bach sat down at the harpsichord, which is a form of clavier, and he improvised. That is, he made up music as he played. And he improvised with such skill that he was pronounced the greatest living musician. While at this court, Prince Leopold of Anne Coffin, Anhalt Coffin, promised Bach more time to compose if he would come to his court as organist and violinist. So once more, he moved with his wife and children. Not long after this, Bach decided to visit the organist Reinken, who by this time was a very old man. When Bach arrived in Hamburg, he played the organ several times for the famous organist, 
whereupon Riken exclaimed, I thought this art was dead, but I perceive that it still lives in you. During one of Bach's many journeys, Maria Bach had suddenly died. He became very lonely and later married a young woman who was one of his pupils. Her name was Anna Magdalena. Today, we still play the little pieces that Bach wrote down in her notebook. For many years, Johann Sebastian Bach was choir master at St. Thomas's School in Leipzig. He taught, played the organ, and worked very hard to support his large family. You see, Bach had 20 children. Yes, Bach had 20 children. Some of them became famous musicians, but none ever wrote as wonderful music as Johann Sebastian, the greatest Bach of them all. Johann Sebastian Bach was recognized as a great organist and was loved as a fine teacher. But it was not until a hundred years later that the world began to pay honor to his music. Today, Johann Sebastian Bach is known as the father of our modern music. There is one very interesting reason for this. Bach was a scientist as well as a musician, and he started a system of tuning, which entirely changed the possibilities of keyboard music. One of his most famous works was composed to show the results of his new system of tuning. He called it the Well-Tempered Clavier, known today as the Well-Tempered Clavichord. It is divided into two parts, each part consisting of 24 preludes or introductions and 24 fugues, one in each of the major and minor keys, to prove the usefulness of his invention. A fugue contains several melodies which chase one another, forming a definite pattern. Johann Sebastian Bach changed the tones or units of sound on the keyboard so that any scale might be played upon the same instrument. So when we play our scales on the piano today, we take them for granted, as we do our ABCs. But truthfully, we owe a great debt of gratitude to Johann Sebastian Bach for developing this workable means of expressing music on the keyboard. Bach died at Leipzig on July 28th 1750, but his well-tempered clavichord, his six Brandenburg concertos or concert pieces, his passions according to St. John and St. Matthew, the B minor mass, the chorales, all church music, and his last work of all, the art of the few, will keep the name Johann Sebastian Bach alive forever. This story came from the book, Famous Composers for Young People, written by Gladys Birch and John Wolcott. Published by A.S. Barnes & Company of New York in 1945. Now that you've learned about Johann Sebastian Bach and the pieces he wrote using the scales, it is a good time for you to begin learning your scales. We will start with these first five scales. In the key of C, in the key of G and D, and F and B flat. <laughs> 